Elijah, congratulations on Black Emperor Broadway. Thank you. Thank you. It was a joy. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I have to admit is mm -hmm. um, when I first heard about this film and there was going to be blackface in the film, I, I wanted to not watch the film. I don't know. That's, that's just my tendency when I ever hear of something having blackface and I just want to cringe. But of course, it's historical. It's art. Yeah. And, and, and that's probably how Black Emperor of Broadway should be be perceived because it's it's a historical accuracy right it's historical accuracy exactly like it just is i mean it's part of the history of the theater in this country that we don't talk about i mean you know i went to juilliard we don't talk about we didn't talk much about blackface and i mean but that's that's part of the origins of of of, of at least the black experience in this country absolutely so so what initially attracted you to this project of black emperor of broadway <laughs> Well, honestly, um, I, I mean, you know, getting the role was very attractive, um, but I was attracted to it because I was ashamed that I had never even heard of, of Charles Gilpin, you know, like I didn't know his story. And so I just, I was mortified and then I was intrigued. And when I did some, you know, some digging, I was like, why why aren't we taught about him in school? Like he is a legend. I mean, to be a black man in the 20s to start on Broadway. Uh, <laughs> incredible, absolutely incredible. So so when you got the script, that's when you started to do research on Charles Gippen your, yourself? Actually, um, it was upon hearing about it. Um, I had sent in a tape um, but I, I hadn't read the script or anything, but I just, just out of curiosity, I was like, who's this person and why don't I know about him? So I just, you know, did a, a, a search and I just found all this information and I was like, oh, this is, this is, I mean, I, I was just mortified that we, I have not known about him. Like, um, I'm, I'm actually ashamed about that, but you know, knowledge is power and I was so grateful to not only learn about his story but also assist in telling this beautiful story about this this man who decided nope I'm gonna um you know uh I'm gonna a be a an actor because <laughs> that that already is revolutionary at that time it's revolutionary now you know I got family members that are like what you doing? <laughs> like, like, you don't want to use your psychology degree? Like, don't you want to, you know? Um, and, and, but he was in the twenties doing this and decided to be on Broadway. And, and not only that, he also put his foot down when it came to using the N word, which, uh, you know, I mean, there are things now that I find trouble. I, I find it difficult to speak up about in terms of, it could be an audition or a role or something. And it, it you know, I can be very skittish about going, Hey, can we like talk about this? You know, and and we're not even in the 1920s. I mean, sometimes it seems like we're we we are, but yeah, yeah. Speak speaking of that, I mean, we're we're talking about a hundred years later, and there are still, you know, some artwork or movie productions that just try to use the n n word, but um, obviously it's not. Uh, how would you say they try to use it much more in a language of like a like you know like gangs and and rap mm, or, mm -hmm. uh, or historical context what what do you think about that today i personally choose not to use that word in my life um it just has weight it has a weight that um it's like i can feel my ancestors going oh no <laughs> no 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 um i do feel like anything um sort of controversial is uh it sort of sells you know it becomes cool somehow um i do understand that black people have uh uh done their best to sort of take the word back so there's a, a debate about that but um i just know in life i mean i'm you know i live in lamert park and i'll hear you know, people of other races walking down the street and, you know, using the N-word because they don't think anyone can hear, but I'm, you know, my windows are open, I'm listening and I'm going, <laughs> you know, or when I'm in the Bronx, you know, I, I, I hear it there too, used by everyone. And 
Um, and I even know of people who have said that their white friends are, you know, they actually use it too. And I'm, I'm, you know, even in their presence as a black person. So I'm, yeah, it, it, it it's amazing how, you know, over, you know, a hundred years later, it's still, you know, an issue. Well, good, good thing a hundred years later, blackface is definitely not acceptable anymore so it's it's not although <laughs> there have been some films um and in, in recent history very recent in the last like 10 years where people have blackened up you know to play a role or you know as as you may you know i'm sure you know you know there are um, people who aren't asian who like you know change their sort of skin you know what i mean so it's still it's it's amazing to me how it's people still get away with you know, offenses like that. Yeah. It, but it's it, not commonplace. Yes, you're absolutely yeah, absolutely right. It's, not it's just not as common. They probably just no. do it, try to do it a little bit low key to sneak, sneak it through. Um, so your character, Florence Gilpin, who, who is the wife to Charles Gilpin. Yeah. I'm sure you had plenty of research on Charles, but there's probably no research whatsoever on Florence. So how did you want to approach Florence as a character? Oh yeah, that was that was painful because you know I love research. Um, I was taught that in my Juilliard days, um, and I really enjoy that process. And so yes, I was able to find a lot on um, Mr. Gilpin, but Florence, the most I found is you know she she was married to him. That's you know, and um, and you know oftentimes in stories, especially about a man the woman tends to be like, you know, the, uh, the, the simple character, like the, just the supportive wife and doesn't have, uh, isn't necessarily given a lot of depth and humanity or range of humanity. You know, it's like this one note of, oh, very supportive wife or something, um, or a wife that's done wrong. Or, and I just, I was determined to find you know, some, some nuances and, and uh, I mean, it's already in the script, thank goodness. I mean, it was, you know, written so beautifully, but I was able to, I mean, I just started thinking, what woman in the 1920s is gonna support her man <laughs> being an, at, or stay with him? Like, like, let's say, cause we don't know how supportive she was, you know, in terms of, we don't know the ins and outs, but she stayed with him during that time. And a woman that does that in that era, um, and, and, and a woman who she seemed to have her own um, uh, agency, like she works and she, you know what I mean? So it's not, uh, yes, yes, I thought in those days, and even now sometimes, you know, people need their partner to survive, but she, it, I, my instinct told me that there was more to her than, you know, um, just uh, a wife who's gonna sit on the sidelines and say, hey, whatever you wanna do, babe. You know, I, I think, I believe um, that, you know, I approached her from the standpoint of how brave is it to be someone and how bold is it to be a woman, a black woman in the 1920s to say, you know, to just be there for their man in a in a in a creative endeavor such as that like she wasn't like no go you know get you a porter job you know like or if she was she changed you know and that says a lot um i definitely know from experience i've had you know i've had some 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 situations where you know people might have questioned my choice as an actor so I, i'm only imagining you know who this remarkable i think she must have been remarkable if she was willing to um stand not only stand by him but support him and you know, I, 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 I had my own theory on because I because I did a little bit of research and uh -huh. I and I think it's not portrayed in the film is because they had a son together. Yes, they did. They did. Yeah. They did have a son together. And that's also, you know, um, because we weren't uh, delving into that in the film, I, you know, um, wasn't going to use that. Um, but yeah, that actually, you know, can definitely complicate things when you, you know, have, have children. Um, but even still, like, even still, there's something about who is the woman that's going to be by the side of an act, 
actor, a black actor in the 1920s. That's fascinating to me. I wish I could talk to her. <laughs> that that <laughs> is fascinating. It's because there, there wasn't a lot of opportunities. No. For black actors. I mean, they're like for 99% of actors today, you know, it's, it's already hard for, for them. So uh, yeah. you can imagine what it was a hundred years ago for black actors. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. And even if they worked, they weren't able to support themselves. I mean, they might've done, you know, the, the, the chitlin circuit or, you know, the, like, they just, there just wasn't, I mean, listen, there are very few opportunities now, but you know, we're very lucky and blessed that, you know, we're in this time period, there, you know, are more opportunities, but, uh, you know, most working actors aren't working now. So it's like, um, so yeah, it's amazing that he was able to make a living and also to challenge, um, to challenge, to challenge his quote unquote superiors, who did the writer to, to challenge everything about the story and, and stand his ground. So I, I just, he, he fascinates me too. He's remarkable. I, I do like the, how you approach the character is because you try to make her very supportive, very loving. And I think I want to bring up one of the scenes that, uh, that there are clips shown out is where you're reading, um, you know, the, the reviews. Oh, yes. And I, and I thought that was um, your, your best scene. And I also thought that was, that, that was the, the connection to a, mm -hmm. as, a, as a character. Could you talk about that scene? Yeah, I I think that scene is so beautifully crafted. Um, it's so beautifully written because it shows to me if you have to pick one scene that defines Florence as I imagine her to be, that in that scene it's there. Like she has a way, a beautiful. Um, they're, they're playful with each other. She also has a way of supporting him. So she's reading his reviews and she's, you know, excited too. She feels like it's, it's her win as well. And then she also catches him when he sort of, you know, uh, starts to feel himself a little bit too much and, and, it is, and, it, and his ego starts to kind of get in the way of, of it. And she, she's willing to speak her mind when they're in private and let him know, no, 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 like, you know, like, come on, you know, like, take it down, you know, like, this is about the story, so, and she does that um, throughout the film, where she'll, she'll sort of challenge him to mm -hmm. release his ego, and to, like, you know, see the situation as it is, versus, you know, just seeing himself, and, 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 you know, I mean, you know, us actors can have big heads, <laughs> so I understand that, and Florence was like, no, 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 wait a minute, <laughs> And I love that. And she's so loving. And she realizes when she, you know, when he's hurting, she's like, oh, okay, this is the time he needs some, some, some love, you know, some just tenderness. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, one of the things that you portrayed with your character is uh, the multiple disappointments when he turns to alcohol, which is 100 years ago during that time, alcohol was not even legal. Legal, and, yeah. And, and somehow a lot of these characters back then turn to alcohol, which is, which is kind of a shameful process. Yeah, it, I mean, it is, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I mean, today it's, you know, a very similar uh, situation. Um, I think in general, being in the arts is a very, um, it's very challenging. There's something very particular about being an actor though, because you are your instrument and you are putting yourself out, like, I, it took me so long to realize when I say didn't get a role I really wanted or something happened that was a disappointment to realize it's not Nyjah. It's, it's, yes, it is Nyjah, but it's not Nyjah. You know, like it's, you have to almost have a healthy separation. It's still hard. It's still a work in progress because we're constantly putting ourselves out there. And I think for a lot of artists, you know, drugs and alcohol can definitely like numb that feeling of being raw, being vulnerable, being, you know, constantly putting yourself out there to be maybe rejected or accepted. Like that already goes against the grain of humanity. Like we should not be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, it, 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 it um, I am grateful that the film addressed that part too, because, you know, that was definitely a struggle of his. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it just makes them more complex and more human. Well, well, for for you, Nija, I mean, um, you you've been in the business for 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 some time now because because I've interviewed a lot of actors and I find anxiety 
is like uh, like one of the main things with a lot lot of actors, especially it's the it's the thing that you don't think actors should have is anxiety. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, but actors are being actors. You guys could hide it very well. How how do you cope yourself? I mean, do you have relaxed yeah. methods, or do you oh, just do think, I? you just turn it off, turn it <laughs> on, turn it off? You know, I had. Uh, And it's funny, so many actors are actually very shy, like people don't realize that. I happen to not be a shy person, but most of my actor friends I would put in the category of like shy, like, you know. Um, I had an acting teacher, not an actor, excuse me, my my, um, singing teacher at uh, Juilliard, Deb Lapidus, um, she said, she basically said, however high your fear is, you have to want it that much more. So if you're super fearful to the point where you have stage fright, then you just have to want it that much more. And that really stuck with me. So I, I do my best not to, um, not to allow the nerves or anxieties about anything get in the way of the process because, so I just have to go, okay, well then I gotta dig in that much more if I'm gonna be able to do this thing. So yeah, I got tons of relaxation techniques. I mean, I'm a meditator, I've been meditating for years. Um, so I meditate, I write, I you know, do yoga. I, you know, I do, I'm, I, I love all that woo-woo stuff to just kind of chill out because um, otherwise I think my mind would probably race a mile a minute. So I, I, I do whatever I, I need to do to practice being present period like in life and it helps me I mean it's something simple as it's something as simple as every time I go to a grocery store or like a CVS or something I make it a point to get off of my phone you know speak to the person like I'm never on the phone I'm never that person that's like oh okay thank you you know I just I, I make it a point to take the person in and I think the more we practice being present in life, we can do it on stage or we can do it with our families and friends. I mean, it's just, it's just a practice and it's getting harder and harder. I can't lie because social media and like, you know, the internet and, you know, it's just, it's getting harder to, to still, you know, to still. Yeah. Every, every, everything is changing um, quite, quite, quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, talk about, the period costumes and the hairdo because because uh you know there there's one thing to be a man dressed up a hundred years ago because it, they, they look mm-hmm. like they're still dressed up like in the same suits that we actually have today but mm-hmm. yeah 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 but for you you have to do an, a complete transformation for the 1920s woman and um both in the dresses and both in the hairdo talk about um yeah. being in that period oh it's fun Oh, the costumes are amazing. Like I've I've um also gotten to do an August Wilson play that took place in the twenties. Um, my Rainy's Black Bottom and I love the costumes. They I I'm such a like I love period pieces and I love fashion and I love I love it all. So it was it's just fun. It's like, you know, you go home and you do your work as an actor and you create this role, but then you get, you know, you, you know, our wonderful costume designer puts these beautiful pieces on and all of a sudden you're moving a little bit differently and you're moving maybe slower or, you know, it's just your mannerisms are a little different. And um, it, it, it almost feels like a cheat, if that makes any sense. It's like, it's like doing some of your work for you, you know, um, in a way, because it's like you, you can't help but, you know, it's like if you put on a corset, you, you just can't help but, you know, stand up a little straighter, your back is up, and all of a sudden you're in, you know, you know another period. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Excellent. Of course, we can't uh, forget to talk about your co- co-star, Sean Parks. Could you talk oh. about uh, working alongside with him for, for practically the entire movie for you? Yeah. Um, I just love Sean. He is... I miss him actually because he's in and he lives in England. He was just such he works so hard, he's so dedicated, he's so focused, and he's so much fun to play with. Um, I just really and he's a stand up person. I just I think the world of him. I think he's so he's brilliant. He's just um, you know, when I watch him on screen, I'm just in awe. He's beautiful and it's just so much fun to bounce off of him. I mean he makes you know, 
working with people like him and other actors we had on the set, I mean, it just makes her job so much easier. <laughs> now, when I'm watching this uh, film, I, I almost thought this was a play that I was actually watching because it's almost like a play of a play. Yeah, a play, it, uh -huh. Yeah, but, but it is an indie film. Um, what's your attraction towards like, you know, indie films like, uh, you know, Black Emperor Broadway? Well, honestly, that was my first, well, one of my first indie films, definitely my biggest role in an indie film. And at first it was a bit um, scary because I, you know, we just didn't have time and we just did like a few takes every time and just kept it moving, you know? So it was like, get it, get it or don't like, you know? And, um, and you know, Arthur, our director was just very like zen about it all. And he's oh yeah, we got it, okay, in the day, you know, like, and I, you know, I, I'm that kind of actor, I will keep going. Like if you let me, I will keep going and trying new things and playing and, um, and, I actually discovered how much I actually enjoyed the process on an indie film. I mean, I don't want to speak this in the universe. I want, you know, I definitely want bigger, big budget <laughs> stuff to come my way because, you know, a girl has to eat. But um, I enjoy the process of having very little time because there's not, there's not a much, you know, I, I'm greedy. I'll be at the craft services all day long. Like that's me in between takes. So if I don't have much time to do that, I just have to stay in and stay focused. And, 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 and I really, really enjoy that. I really enjoy that. So yeah, I love it. And I love what was created on a shoestring budget. Like this is a full on period piece and it's done so beautifully. I'm just, I'm in awe. I'm in awe. That's, Craft services is the one reason why I could never be an actor because I probably spend all my time at that table. I, I am known. Like, that is my badge of honor. I am known. I find any reason to be at Crafties. Like, hey, what's going on? Like, you, you, you know, like, stuff and stuff in my pockets. Like, I mean, I'm always going to have this, like, poor actor mentality because I'm just like, you know, I mean, I'm anything short of bringing Tupperware to a set. Like, I'm, I'm down for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway anyway so because because you went to Juilliard you have done various roles what kind of roles do you like to seek I mean what 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 do you seek when you when you get scripts across and you say you know what I want to do this or that honestly honestly it's about story for me so uh it's it's what is this saying like what is the role saying and what is the story saying? And if I can get behind that, I'm all in. I don't care what genre it is. I love comedy, drama. I love it all. I love stage. I love it all. So it's like as long as I believe in what the story is trying to say or trying to challenge or, or the question it's raising, I, I, I'm, I, I love to play. So I just, I love anything like, you know, like any sort of, yeah. And definitely when it comes to, um, specific roles I'll play that I get excited about it you know honestly the more complex the more exciting for me like the more it's like how did this person why did this person do this oh my god like she did what like and and then I may it might be my psychology background that makes me so I love human behavior and why we do what we do so I love sort of excavating like okay how does she get there like you know, why did she, you know, let's say kill her husband? Like, what happened to her as a child that, like, you know? And um, so the more I can kind of dig, and um, I love roles like that. What I'm not as excited about is when I, you know, um, I get something that maybe I feel like I have to add so much to because it's just not on the page. Um, that can get a little taxing because you're just like, where, you know, where, you know, I don't have the support. I don't feel like I'm supported by the story. So, so in it, in it, in your. And I think this way, time period has helped me. Uh huh. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, in 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 your own way, you're you're almost like Charles Gilpin, where where you're you're willing to um, ask for change or challenge the scriptwriter or director if if you see the direction of your character in a in a different way. You're you're not yeah. like straight to the script type of person. To be honest with you, I'm working toward that. Um, that that's the goal of mine. I am. Um, it, it can be hard for me sometimes to sort of 
stand my ground and speak my mind. I'd rather just not take a role if I don't believe in it. So that's where I, that's easier for me to do than to just be sort of on set or, you know, doing a play and sort of being like, you know, cause I'm the kind of actor, I'll just make it work. So I just have to figure out how not to be in projects. And I've been blessed. I have been fortunate. I've worked with just, I mean, I have had, I've had nothing but great experiences. Yeah, nothing but great experiences where I haven't had to go there. So it's easier for me to just turn down an audition or a role than to, you know, challenge it. But I definitely intend to become more like Mr. Gilpin in that way. Um, it just being willing to just, you know, because invariably you're going to be in a situation where, you know, uh, you don't believe in something and you're, you're on set and maybe something changed at the last minute. And, you know, I, I, I'm going to have to figure out how to be willing to just say, wait a minute, you know, this is actually not cool. You know, can we talk about this? So yeah. Yeah. And this time period has helped shift that for me to, you know, just getting more specific about what's important to me and what I stand for and what I don't stand for. You know. Absolutely. Well, let, let, let me wrap it up with one more thing with you, Nija. Yes. The, I, I since since you brought up about this time period, I know it's a s silly question to ask, but you know, yes. everyone's stuck at home or trying to work on their next project. How are you staying creative and sane during times like this? Oh gosh, and I'm gonna answer this quickly because it looks like my battery is low. I forgot to plug okay. my computer in, but um. I am saying, I feel like I've been busy, actually. Like, I've been busy. It's, you know, with online readings. I've turned down a lot of, like, reading, because, you know, I've been traveling a lot, and just a lot has been going on in my life, personally, that, um, yeah, I, I feel like I've been busy doing a lot of readings, and, you know, um, and, I mean, I'm also just a creative person, so I'm going to write, and, you know, um, um, if anything, I'm trying to remember that this time period is supposed to be a rest period. I haven't rested enough. But um, I am grateful for the, the pause, you know, the sort of pause of having tons of auditions or work and, you know. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've been staying creative. It's like, you know, it's kind of in me. I mean, I've been painting and just having, you know, just enjoying life and just try. I want to make candles soon. That's my next <laughs> adventure. And, you know, yeah, it's just, yeah, I, I, I love I love it all. It just it helps. It helps. It helps you it helps you wake up and have a reason to wake up. You know, it makes a thrill to wake up. Absolutely. Well, hey, congratulations on Black Emperor Broadway. Thank and, uh, you. Thank you for talking with me, Nija. And hopefully we get to do thank this Thank you, Gig. Oh, that would be awesome. Thank you for having me, Gig. It's so good to meet you. To it's cyber great. meet you. Yeah, it's great to meet <laughs> you too. So next time, okay? Bye. Yes, next time. Bye.